Direct illumination. So this drop down here is where we turn on the global illumination and we have our ambient occlusion. You can have it on or off. I like to have it on and it's that effect. We're talking about getting a little bit of extra shadow where geometry meets to help ground things and help bring out detail on the model. The amount can vary in percentage from 0% to 100%, which will be one. Then subdivisions, you kind of want those a little high, 16, 24, make sure that that effect's nice and smooth. The radius is based on your inches or based on the units of your model. In this case, it's inches. So what this is saying is this radius right now is 10 inches. And so if you have a wall and a ceiling come together and the ambient occlusion effect is going to happen at the crease, it's really only going to happen within a 10 inch radius of that point. And so if you want to really minimize it to just that line, make sure that distance is small. But let's say if you want to read the ambient occlusion from an aerial, you probably want to make that like three feet, four feet, so that the area that it creates it is spread out more. So keep that in mind. But this is related to the units that you have. In this case, the model is in inches, so this would be 10 inch radius. Going back to GI, so we have two bounces of lights, two engines that deal with bouncing of light. And we have the radiance map, which is the primary engine. And 90% of the time, you'll use your radiance map. Photon map, brute force, and light cache are also available. But the radiance map does a really great job of just getting those first rays of light to fill the entire scene. The secondary bounces, photon map, brute force, and light cache, primarily these two are going to be the ones that you spend more time with. Brute force is the easiest because setting wise there's really two settings there's subdivisions and then there's number of bounces so it's great for exteriors and light cache is great for interiors